So we are starting a new module in this class. The module is about large scale machine learning. So what we will talk about is a class, class of methods for uh, working with data that uh, uh, falls under the umbrella of machine learning, where the idea is that based on uh, we want to analyze the data so that based on the features of the data, we want to predict certain properties of items or data points that we haven't yet seen or that we are going to see in the future. And the simplest method that we will talk about today is called nearest neighbor uh, classifier. And based on this idea of nearest neighbor classifiers, we will then develop this into more complicated and more advanced machine learning uh, models. The idea of machine learning, or what is known also as supervised learning, is that we would like to learn uh, a function that is basically making predictions for us. So in, in an abstract way, we would like to estimate, based on the data, a function f of x, so that given x, we can predict y. Now, of course, the question is what, are, what is x and what is y? Most generally, there are kind of two, way, two separate things what y uh, can represent. If y represent a real number, then this is what is known as regression, right? Based on some values of x, I want to predict a real number y. So for example, if I would want to, um, given someone's age and someone's uh, ethnicity and so on, maybe I would want to predict uh, their life expectancy, then this would be an example of um, a regression problem. Uh, however, y can also be a categorical variable, right? Which um, you can think of it as a binary variable or something like that. Right? This predicting a categorical variable is known as a problem of classification. Right? So for example, one, one case of classification would be that I give you a document and I, or an email and I want to ask you, is this spammy email or not? Right? So given a document, you want to decide, return a binary val variable, 0 or 1, where 0 means not spam and 1 means, yes, this is spam, let's discard this email. Uh, of course, you can also predict kind of more complex objects. For example, you can sometimes, y could be a ranking, an ordering of things, or it could be, for example, if you are working with sentences, y could be a whole parse tree. But what we will focus on in our lecture is mostly on classification. So basically, uh, given a set of x's, decide what is the label, the binary label of every x. And what is, why do we call this whole thing supervised learning is because we think of our data as labeled. We are thinking that we are getting a set of many pairs x and y where x is, is, x is the data that we are getting and y is the variable or the class that we want to predict. So we can think of s as a vector of binary, categorical or real uh, valued features and y as the class, let's say plus one, minus one um, or a real number if we are working with regression. And if we think about this case, basically we can think of x as a set of features representing our data point and y is the property of the data point we want to predict. So if I want to predict um, spam, then for example, x could be a set of words in the email and y is uh, a binary variable that tells us whether that email is spam or not. If I would want to, for example, model um, human diseases, I could, x could be a set of um, symptoms or set of characteristics of a patient and why could be whether that patient suffers from that disease or not. So this is the first idea, the idea of having a set of features and then having the dependent variable that we want to predict based on that set of features using our function f. Um, another important idea is that we will think of our data in some sense as coming as this big matrix, right? Where we can take our features, feature vectors um, and stack them together in a matrix. And then we can think of uh, our depend, uh, dependent variables y, so the class values that we aim to predict, as a long, uh, thin vector. And of course, what we can also do then is to say, based on this, what we will call training data, we want to estimate our function f so that whenever um, we, ob we observe some new unseen uh, data x prime, we will be able to predict what are the associated class values with this unseen uh, data, right? So the idea is that we will want to learn our function f based on the training data set that is labeled in a sense that we have both x's and y's. And then in the future, our hope is that we will, we will get this new data set, this, uh, we call it a testing data set, uh, where we only know x's, and from x's we will try to predict uh, these y's. So we will always kind of think about the training stage of our algorithm and then the testing or the application stage of our algorithm. So in this module, we will talk about several different uh, machine learning uh, methods where we'll be kind of focusing on large scale data. In particular, we will talk 
today about uh, k-nearest neighbor, which is, an, which is something that a method in a class of instance-based learning. And then we will also talk about support vector machines and decision trees. And kind of the main question when working with machine learning methods is how do we efficiently train or build a model uh, based, on the, based on the data? So in a sense, the main question that arises in machine learning is how do I find this function f that takes the input features and predicts the, the class variable, right? So f learning or estimating this fun function f is the hardest part of, uh, of machine learning. So an example of instance-based learning, the idea here is that we want to use existing is instances or existing data points to make predictions about unknown or unlabeled data points. So the example of such a method is called nearest neighbor. Right, where the idea is that we take all our training data, all our x, y pairs, um, let's say in memory or on the disk, and then whenever a new, new query example, let's call it Q, comes, we find other examples um, uh, x prime that are, that are um, similar to it. And then based on the, value, the labels of those examples, we also predict the value uh, uh, y, y star for the, for the given query point Q. So, what is interesting about nearest neighbor is that it works both for regression and classification. And if we think about um, recommender systems, in particular collaborative filtering, collaborative filtering is a, an example of a nearest neighbor classifier. Right? There, there the idea was that when a user comes, we find k most similar users to our given query user q. Then we look at what these other k most similar users, what are the movies they liked, and based on the movies these other users liked, we are making a recommendation to our query user Q. So this is exactly an example of a nearest neighbor, where a query arrives, we find nearest data points. Based on the labels of the nearest data points, we kind of try to combine those labels to talk about uh, the label of the query point. The simplest of all nearest neighbor classifiers is what is called a one nearest neighbor classifier, right? Where the idea is that whenever we want to make um, a la uh, decide on a label of a given of a given data point, we simply find the, the point most similar to it and and uh, use that label as a prediction. So in a in particular, when we want to m d implement a nearest neighbor classifier, there are several things we have to decide on. First is we have to decide on a distance metric, right? How do we measure the similarities or distances between data points? So for example, in the case I will show you here is let's assume we are using Euclidean distance. Um, then another thing we have to decide is how many neighbors are we looking at? Are we looking at one nearest neighbor, five nearest neighbors? How many nearest points do we want to uh, examine? So in our case, let's look at one nearest neighbor. Another important thing is how are we um, weighing these different uh, neighbors that we are uh, combining together, right? So in, in this case that I'll show you, we won't worry about this just yet. And then another important um, question is, how do I then uh, uh, take all these nearest neighbors and combine the, their values into a single point that I will use as prediction? And in our case, because we are just using one nearest neighbor, all we have to do is just predict the same output as, at is, as is the value of the nearest neighbor. For example, now if I show you how this works, here I have a simple two-dimensional data set where I can think of the x-axis as the input feature and the y-axis is the value I would like to predict. And um, uh, blue points are my data points and the black line shows the output of a ne uh, one nearest neighbor classifier. You basically see that for around every point we exactly just predict the value um, of that point. And then if our data set is noisy, our, our prediction jumps around uh, quite a lot. If our data set is nice and smooth, we are basically predicting this almost like um, a step function. So um, this seems to be working quite well in this simple example, but we are seeing the, what the method is suffering from. It is making lots of very uh, um, spiky or sharp decisions because we are only looking at the one nearest neighbor. So we want to generalize this and maybe try to kind of use more nearest neighbors to average better. So let's look at how that works, right? So if we want, want to generalize now our method and call it a k nearest neighbor, then now the idea is I, I, we will still use the Euclidean distance. Now how many uh, neighbors will we look at? We will look at k, where k is some number cho chosen by the uh, user. How, and then how do we combine the labels of all the k neighbors into the 
into one label. Um, for example, right now, let's just say that we, our output will be the average, out, uh, the average of the uh, classes of the k nearest neighbors. So very simply, for example, here is our uh, data sets from the previous slide. We are using here k equals 9, which means we are averaging together the y value of the nine nearest points to our query point. And given the blue data, um, this is the predicted value that we would make. For example, notice that now our predicted um, function, our function f of x in, in some sense, if you like, um, is much smoother than what it was before. While nearest neighbor is a very simple method, one thing that we haven't yet discussed is actually how do we go, go and find nearest neighbors. So our, the task here is basically given a set of points um, in, in, some, in some space. So this is basically our data set. Our goal is to find um, as, as another set of points that are close to our query point Q. And uh, there are two types of queries we may want to ask. One type of query is to say, give me nearest k points to our um, point Q. And another way to ask a query would be the range search, where we would say, give me all the points that are inside some distance of Q. In both of these cases, a naive solution would require a linear pass over the data, so it would take linear time. But we already know how to do this better. For example, using locality-sensitive hashing, we could, we could find uh, nearest neighbors in near, in near constant time. So that would be a good way how to really make nearest neighbor classifiers scale to large-scale data.